Hey, Justin with Audio and Vision here. I'm going to show you how you can turn a modular phone jack in your house into an Ethernet port or a data port that you can plug your laptop or desktop computer into. Let's get started. Luckily, I do know that this house has been wired with uh, either Cat5 or Cat5e. And so we can actually convert this into a data port. So that's from an RG11 into a RJ45. I ordered these on Amazon. This one's a single port. They come all the way up into eight ports. We have eight slots. And these are the actual inserts. These are actually Cat5e inserts. I would recommend at least a Cat5e insert. You'll also need, which I just dropped, a flathead screwdriver. You'll also need a punch tool. So we got our punch tool and we also need a stripper. We got our stripper and our cutter, punch tool, flathead screwdriver, wall plate, and an insert. Let's get to it. We're gonna start by unscrewing the wall plate. Sometimes on this cable, you can actually see what it is. I believe this is Cat, this is Cat 5e. It's got some labeling right there. It's hard to see because they painted over it. Mainly I could tell this is Cat 5 or Cat 5e is because it's got your brown pair, your green pair, your orange pair, and your blue pair. And in phone systems, the phone is running over the blue pair for the line one, the green pair for line two, the orange pair for line three, and the brown pair for line four. Let's get out our data connector and don't drop things. Okay, I don't know where that went. Let's just get another one. I'll always buy more than one. They're not that expensive. Really easy. Basically, you look at the connector and you line up the wires with whatever standard you want. I recommend going with standard B. If for whatever reason your house is in A, uh, then you can run it in A. I recommend keeping it the same standard as the house is in. But we're gonna do B, which means I'm gonna start with my orange pair right there. So the first one's gonna be stripe orange. And what I do is I line the edge of this connector up right there to the edge, and then I pull my wires in. Okay, now we do the blue. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, once I'm done with one side, I usually will go ahead and punch it down. If you have a proper punch tool, there's a cutting edge and there's a punch edge. It cuts off these, these wires right here. If you flip it around, you cut the inside wires, you have to start all over. The trouble with doing these on the wall is trying to find a nice flat surface to do it on. You can do this, I hate doing this sometimes, is you can, if you're really careful, you can press it up against the drywall. But just know that it has a percussion sort of impact situation going on. And you wanna make sure you don't damage the drywall. Make sure that goes down. We got stripe to stripe, solid to solid, stripe to stripe, solid to solid, and we're in B. We're good to go. I'll be really careful not to damage this drywall. We grab our cover, snaps in, check out our um, assignments again, make sure they're all correct, lines up. Okay, we're good. Kind of snaps in like that. You'll know if it if you got it wrong because it won't. It'll it'll actually easily come easily come back out, but it's locked in there. Just kind of shove that wire in there. Make sure you don't want to fold this wire and make sure it doesn't get kinked or anything like that. All right, line up your screws. Big pet peeve of this: when you're done tightening, these screws go up and down like that, and it looks pro. Our data connection is done. There is another step to this, but just make sure you get the other end of this wire terminated the same way, plugged into a switch which is plugged into some sort of router somewhere, and then this will get a data connection. So if you have any other uh, questions or you want me to post any other videos on how to do similar around the house, home theater, audio video, or networking projects, let me know.